Hey, today we're going to look at a 1999 Chevrolet Suburban uh, with the 6.5 liter turbocharged diesel. And this particular vehicle is showing a check engine light with a diagnostic code on the scanner of uh, P0236. And I'm going to show you how you can diagnose this particular code. It's, it's quite common. And nine times out of ten, roughly, it's going to be this little guy back here in the back on this uh, part here called a wastegate solenoid, which you can see back here towards the back with the, uh, the blue connector. But to really see the whole uh, flow of the circuit, we're going to need to re uh, remove the turbo power shroud housing off the intake manifold here. We're going to do that with a 10 millimeter socket. So let me uh, take that off and show you what's okay, underneath. We've got that shroud off. So uh, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing in the video here. So we're looking at a diagnostic code P0236, which ties back to a problem with the wastegate boost pressure on the turbocharger. And there's a system here that we're going to walk through the different components on here that are involved in any one of which could be uh, a failure point or even multiple failure points to have the uh, powertrain control module fire off that code with the check engine light. The primary reason we're going to go over this whole circuit is on a diesel engine, we've got no vacuum. And so we need a source of vacuum to actuate that wastegate valve uh, on, the, on the turbocharger. And this is very much like what you see on this particular vehicle. Uh, there's a, there's a, not a vacuum power booster on the brake back here. This is actually hydraulically powered uh, through the power steering pump. It's called a hydro boost. And the primary reason that's different on a diesel uh, vehicle versus a gasoline fuel uh, vehicle is because of that lack of vacuum. So let's start going through this. Now, right the way this whole system works, we'll start right at the source, the vacuum pump. So right down here underneath the alternator, and I've got the light shining on it down here, and I, hopefully you can see it pretty well, um, but it's, it's right here. It's this guy right here uh, where my finger is uh, down here is the vacuum pump itself. Come back over here a little bit better so I can get a kind of a better view of that guy. There he goes. The vacuum pump is uh, driven off the accessory serpentine belt, and that's our source of vacuum. And on the top of that, so there's a, there's a metal nipple on there, and then on the top of that is a, uh, a black connector to a orange hardline vacuum tube. You can see coming up here, uh, exiting right behind the alternator bracket. Orange is the source vacuum from the pump. And if you follow that in through the wire loom, it goes into the loom. And by the way, you'll notice mine look pretty good. These are uh, need to be replaced if they're getting dry and brittle. This is what's going to keep that line from getting heat damaged, chaffed, or melted. So that, that uh, whole loom travels over here, and it actually uh, ends up with the part we were referencing earlier right here in the back, which is the wastegate solenoid itself. I'm going to try to come in from a different angle. You can see this guy. So this is an electrically operated solenoid valve. Uh, electrically operated from the powertrain control module, uh, when it sends out a signal to need more boost, it's going to let the vacuum from this pump then flow into the second line that's a hard black plastic line, comes back through the same wire loom. That guy's going to route over to this can over here, which is a vacuum actuator. And this vacuum actuator inside this guy is a, uh, is, is a diaphragm that's uh, pulled up by vacuum and a spring. And the way this guy's going to work here is there's a lever underneath him. You can see it on your own vehicle. I can't get my hand in there to let you see it uh, quite that well. But uh, when the vacuum goes up, this lever pulls up uh, on that actuator arm. And that's what operates the flapper valve, which is called a wastegate, to determine how much of the exhaust gas from the engine is routed into the turbine of the turbocharger versus just exited out the vehicle as waste gas hence the name Wastegate. So what we're going to do to diagnose all this, there's a couple of things we're going to look at. The number one failure point for this P0236 code is the Wastegate solenoid itself. Uh, but it also can be the number two failure point would be the pump. Number three failure point would be one or both of the two vacuum lines we talked about. And then the last least likely would be the actuator itself. And the way we're going to test this is, and the engine is going to be kind of loud when I show you this test, so I'm going to talk to it, I'll show it to you, and then I'll recap it. We're going to do some tests with a vacuum gauge. So we're not measuring pressure here, we're measuring inches of vacuum. Now you can pick these up at Sears, you can probably pick one up at Harbor Freight. Um, we're going to measure two things. We're going to disconnect the source vacuum line from the pump going over to the uh, wastegate solenoid, and we're going to make sure that we're getting at least 
15 inches of mercury of vacuum out of the vacuum pump itself. That'll tell us that the pump's good and that the line from the pump to the solenoid's good. If we don't get that, then we already know that the pump's, the, either the pump's got a problem or we've got a leak in this orange hard line. Uh, if that's okay, then we're going to check the vacuum that's coming from the solenoid over to the actuator valve over here. And uh, we're going to be measuring uh, from that end to tell us, well, do we have actual flow from the solenoid itself to the actuator? If we don't get vacuum here and it's not this black vacuum line, then we know we can replace the solenoid itself, and that tends to be uh, the source of these problems. Of course, the, the another thing that we won't be able to test today, but you might have to look at if none of this turns out to be the situation for your vehicle, is there could be a problem with the electrical connector on the solenoid coming from the powertrain control module. Um, it, it might have a ground issue, or the line may have gotten uh, chafed and be shorting out, or and you not have a good connection there. But that's uh, not as likely as these other things we're going to be looking at. All right, so I'm going to be firing up the vehicle, uh, showing you how to measure the vacuum on these two points, showing you what you're getting on this. I've actually replaced that solenoid uh, itself, that wastegate solenoid already. Uh, I got that code out of the way, so I've got a working system here, so I can show you how it's supposed to be. So let me go get that started up, and we'll do that. All right, now we're going to get the engine started. We're going to disconnect this uh, vacuum line that we talked about. We're just in this orange line here first. See on the left. Take a reading off this. You can see we're getting 25 inches, uh, well, actually 27 or so inches of mercury uh, and pressure. So we've got a really solid pump here, and we're getting, we know it's not the pump and it's not the line at this point. Okay, so again, I start off at zero, I'll plug this guy in there. Real solid uh, vacuum coming out here. So we know it's going to be on the other side. Let's move on to the other side. All right, so we know we have good vacuum coming from the vacuum pump and the primary vacuum line. This next test will help us understand if the problem is in the vacuum actuator or the line from the solenoid to the actuator. So let's work this off with the nipple here. Go nice and slow and gentle. You don't want to crack any of this old rubber. Nice and slow. All right, we got this guy off. Got our vacuum gauge. We're going to put him in here and see what we get. So if we're getting... Uh, 17 inches of mercury, a little bit more, and, and that's great. Anything more than 15 is good. So we've got a good pump, we've got a good primary line, uh, we've got a good secondary line, and we've got good vacuum coming over to the actuator, so we know the wasted solenoid electrical function is fine as well. Let me stop the engine and kind of recap what we've looked at here and things we can check. Okay, so we got the engine shut off now. We can uh, talk without having to... Uh, raise our voice above the background clatter here. So we, we, we're, we're focused mostly on this part I'm showing you right here. This is the wastegate solenoid here. And you can see we talked about how to well, remove the vacuum hose here. The factory vacuum hose is a hard line hose. And I'd recommend you replace it with the same thing on a diesel engine. Um, the, the, the soft rubber hoses are going to be much more likely to be damaged from the heat here. But uh, you, you can see now what you need to check. Uh, vacuum pressure that you want on both ends here, you're looking at 15 inches of mercury minimum. You need that vacuum gauge, Sears or Harbor Freight. Um, vacuum pump, primary line, wastegate solenoid. If you find that you're not getting the same type of uh, expectations over here at the actuator. Uh, some part numbers here. I always, uh, if you see my other videos, I'm always using GM parts. Uh, that vacuum pump is an AC Delco 215-479. Um, it's currently a GM 890-17558. Highly recommend GM AC Delco parts. Uh, I've had this vehicle since brand new in 1999. I've only had to replace that pump once. I expect never have to do it again in my lifetime. On this uh, wastegate solenoid, AC Delco 214-637, GM 199-7255. Uh, this one you're looking at here that I just did uh, a few, uh, just, you know, earlier is uh, the third one I've done since I've owned the truck. So I'm getting a good timeline out of these. These are not parts you want to go cheap on. Uh, there are some parts that are comparable in quality to GMAC Delco, but not the store brands, not the off brands. You want to get something high quality here. Uh, before I sign this off, uh, I want to tell you I had, I had trouble out of the box with this wastegate solenoid. I first put it on, I was still not getting vacuum at the actuator. And it turned out to be that in shipping, the solenoid itself had gotten uh, jammed, if you will. And uh, what I found out is if, if I see something like that uh, before returning the part, uh, I just uh, ran the, uh, 
part right over here to the battery and, and gave it direct juice, 12 volts directly into uh, the back connector that normally it would get its signal from the powertrain control module and unjammed that solenoid. I heard it click. It's a good test to do when you get it. Make sure you hear that click and you know that the solenoid's working uh, before you end up wasting a lot of time uh, chasing a bad replacement part. Uh, it does happen no matter what the brand is. I hope this video helps you out. Um, I hope that uh, helps you close the code. And uh, you know you don't have to clear the code. It'll clear itself uh, after the PCM decides that uh, it hasn't seen this problem happen in three runs. It'll clear the code itself, so you don't have to bother with that. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Bye.